I've gone through my plug and I've put blankers into all the holes that I'm not using. It didn't take me very long, as you can see. Let's shove some wires in the hole. I'm going to start with the shield for the cam and crank angle sensor. Goes up in there. And then the crank sensor is um, trig one. Cam sensor is trig two. Beside those in the digital number four, I'm, I'm actually putting in the idle switch. And there's also a series of Not photos on my phone necessary, but of the progress. I quite like to use it. Normally the voltage input's at the top and the middle. I haven't put that in yet. It's not in the loom. So I'm going to do that in, in a few moments. Once I've got these in. And then I get my injectors. And as I mentioned, I have done them semi-sequential. Injectors 1 and 7 go in first into the first trigger. Injectors uh, 2 and 8 into the next one. We've got grey next. So that's number 3 and 5. And number 4 and 6. Right, the next row. What have I got here? Oh, I do have one that I've blanked off. A map sensor. So there's my one I'm not using. Um, so I, I allocate volt one to the map sensor if I'm doing a atom. And sometimes if I'm doing a generic loom, I'll run the wires so I don't use it for anything else. Right, air temp and water temps are next. So air temp is temp 2. Water temp is temp 1. I've got the TPS in my hand, so I'll pop that in as well. I'm sure that's the right hole. So analog volt 3 for the TPS. I think we're looking okay there. I'm going to put a couple of ignitions in. So these, the two ignitions go out to the igniters. So they go for the triggering their igniters. And ignition one um, is the one that fires coil number one. And ignition two is the one that fires coil number two. The other two ignitions I've used for the fuel pump and the check engine light. So I'm not putting those wires in right now. I'm, I'm dealing with these wires that I've got in front of me. All right, I've got an idle speed control unit. It goes to one of the auxiliary outputs. I'm using number two. Got a pink wire. Um, that's got to be my five volt. So the five volt supply, uh, if you're using a map sensor, goes to the map sensor. My one is going to the TPS and to the oil pressure, which we'll talk about in a moment. And I've got my set of grounds, my ground out for all the sensors. It's got to be that one there. And the two main body grounds. Oh, I'm going to call them the engine grounds, block grounds. These two run out as separate wires all the way to the back of the block. They're bolted to the back of the cylinder heads on separate points. They're actually joined inside the ECU. They're the same wire. Um, but I think that's probably a safety. A little purple wire. A little purple wire is my speedo. Speedo in. And it's going to be DI1. That's one, that one there. Well, that was pretty straightforward. So there's not actually a whole lot of wires to go into it. It's 34 in the plug, I believe. But those are all the ones now done from the engine is now connected to the ECU. As I said, I've got the oil pressure. Normally, I would put the oil pressure sensor by the filter housing. 
However, I know that this one has got a remote filter set up underneath the battery, which is underneath the ECU. I'm actually going to put a little fly lead on. I think I'm going to put a plug on it, build a separate small harness down to the oil pressure. And I'm thinking that's where the oil pressure out is as well. What we're going to do, if the customer lets me, put the oil pressure sensor into replacing the switch. That will run to the ECU. So we've got proper monitoring and logging of the oil pressure, which I'm sure the guys that built the engine will be happy with. So they can see the exact oil pressure. They can then use the ECU to trigger the light on the dash. Okay, real simple, especially with a new engine, and it's kind of a better way to do it. So it makes sense to do that because we can. I'm going to run some power wires to the ECU, the output triggers for the auxiliaries, fuel pumps and fans, and check engine light, and terminate up another plug. One's going to go to the van, one's going to go to the fuse box. Also fitting an OBD2 plug. So OBD2 dongle goes to the smartphone if required. You can monitor things on the ECU, you can't change anything, but great idea. And I'm going to wire up for a wideband sensor. So either a CAN Lambda or a cheaper option. So I'm going to put a plug in which will allow for both. Bit of forward thinking. I'm back into it. Talk to you soon. Here is the start wire that was on this vehicle. I've made some changes. I've got this wire, which comes through, pops out over here. So there's a start wire there. So if we want to, we can put the start trigger here. However, this one here, which goes into the starter motor, to connect into my loom comes out the right hand side. However, if we want to go directly into the other one, you can tuck it out the left hand side and it should be long enough to reach the van's original trigger. And this one just becomes a spear. I'm trying to make it simple. And this plug, which will be the plug that goes into the body of the van. So in here I've got a taco, a water temp for the dash, check engine light, a fan, which comes directly from there. And that was going all the time because it had been linked into the fuel pump wiring and that's why it had fried up that terminal. It actually had a big burn up in there. Let's see if I can pop this relay out and see how burnt it is under here. Yeah, it's been a little bit warm, had a bit of a melt up. So that relay was running the fan and the fuel pump. On this side I've got an a start, an air conditioning and an ignition. Pretty simple. So my goal at this point is to build a relay fuse box that will integrate into what's in there, that the mechanics that has got this vehicle can put together and make sense. So the idea is to make a plug that will plug into that. I'm going to move the fan output. So I want them to check that the fan wiring is up to the job and it's going to come off the relay box. So here's a fan output, fan and an earth, and there's the fuel pump. So I can make those connections work, and I can put this connector on, I'll start, AC, ignition, don't need the fan trigger because the ECU will do it, check engine light, water temp and taco. Ah, I can make that work. So I've got a plan, build a relay box that'll fit into this vehicle that I can't see, wire the outputs, 
put that same plug on so the guys can plug it in and the van will run. Put a fan output and a fuel pump output. They'll have to change the earth and it'll start and run and work better than it did on the old system. I'm into that.